Hello everyone, welcome to Power Electronics. In this session, I will be discussing the principle of phase control of AC voltage controllers. The principle of phase control can be explained using the single phase unidirectional controller circuit shown in figure 1 here. Note that the load is resistive. In this technique, the power flow to the load is controlled by delaying the firing angle or triggering angle of thyristor T1. In the positive half cycle of the input supply, the thyristor T1 is forward biased and will conduct when a gating signal is provided to it. When the thyristor starts conducting, the output will follow the input for the rest of the half cycle. In this period, that is in the positive half cycle, the control across the output voltage is achieved by triggering the thyristor at some angle alpha. In the negative half cycle of the input supply, the diode will ideally start conducting at omega t equals to pi as it is uncontrolled turn on device and hence the output follows the input for the complete negative half cycle. Since the diode is a uncontrolled turn on device, the output cannot be controlled during the negative half cycle. Hence, the circuit used for analysis here is called a single phase half wave controller and is suitable only for low power resistive loads such as heating and lighting. Figure 2 here illustrates the gate pulses of thyristor T1 and the waveforms for the input and output voltages. It can be seen from the output voltage waveform that the output appears only for a part of the input positive half cycle and can be varied by varying the value of the triggering value or triggering angle alpha. Due to the presence of diode D1, the control range of this converter is limited and the effective RMS output voltage can only be varied between 70.7% and 100%. Further, since the output load voltage can be controlled, only during the positive half cycle of the input supply, the output voltage and input current are asymmetrical and hence contain a DC component. Since the power flow is controlled during the positive half cycle of the input voltage only, this type of controller is also called as a unidirectional controller. Now we will continue to find expressions for RMS and DC values of the average output load voltage. If Vs or the supply voltage is given as Vm sin omega t which equals root 2 into Vs sin omega t is the input voltage and the delay angle of the thyristor T1 is omega t equals alpha, the RMS output voltage can be found as here. V0 equals 2, we will consider one full cycle therefore 1 by 2 pi. Let us take the output voltage waveforms between the positive and negative off cycle separately. So, in the positive off cycle, the output appears between alpha to pi and we are going to integrate the voltage across the output which is equal to input and this is taken from root 2 Vs in omega t and this squared. Then in the negative off cycle, the output cannot be controlled and therefore the limits of integration are pi and 2 pi. Once again, the input is the output here and therefore we are going to integrate the input itself which is once again root 2 Vs in omega t is taken with square value and everything is put under the square root to create the root mean squared value. Let us take 2 Vs square to the left hand side of the constant term integration alpha to pi since sin square d omega sin square omega t cannot be integrated directly we will convert it into 1 minus cos 2 omega t divided by 2 the same is applied here and the divided by 2 term is taken to the constant term to create 4 pi. Further we will apply the integration, integration of d omega t is simply omega t and the limits are alpha to pi. Integration of cos 2 omega t is sin 2 omega t divided by 2, limits are once again alpha to pi. Coming to the second term here, integration of d omega t is again omega t and the limits here are pi and 2 pi and for cos 2 omega t it is sin 2 omega t divided by 2 limits are pi to 2 pi. We will continue to apply the limits so omega t between pi and alpha is pi minus alpha minus of sin 2 pi minus of sin 2 alpha whole divided by 2 plus 2 pi minus pi minus of sin 2 into 2 pi is sin 4 pi 
minus of sin 2 pi divided by 2. Continuing, this will simply be pi minus alpha minus of sin of 2 pi is 0. So, minus of minus is plus. So, we will get plus sin 2 alpha plus of pi 2 pi minus pi is pi minus sin of 4 pi is 0 and sin of 2 pi is also 0. So, this whole term will be 0. So, 0 minus 0 divided by 2. So, this complete term reduces to this is pi and this is pi therefore 2 pi minus alpha minus of minus is plus so sin 2 alpha divided by 2 whole to the power 1 by 2 as it is. So v naught is then equal to this 2 and this 4 are getting cancelled to create 1 by 2 into v square by pi 2 pi minus alpha plus sin 2 alpha divided by 2 whole to the power 1 by 2. I will take v square to the outside it will be v s whole multiplied by 1 by 2 pi into 2 pi minus alpha plus sin 2 alpha by 2 whole to the power 1 by 2. This is the final expression for the RMS value of the output load voltage. If alpha is varied from 0 to pi, the output load voltage, the RMS value varies from Vs to Vs divided by root 2. Now we will continue to find an expression for the average value of the output load voltage and it is given as Vdc equals to 1 by 2 pi integral alpha to pi. Now only the average is there therefore no squaring root 2 Vs in omega t as it is and for the negative half cycle of the input the output is integral pi to 2 pi root 2 Vs in omega t since the output is not controllable in the negative half cycle it is taken as it is. We will take the root 2 Vs to the constant term. So, root is root 2 Vs by 2 pi. Integration of sin omega t is minus cos omega t and the limits are alpha to pi. Once again, the same is applied here. The limits are pi to 2 pi. Let us apply the limits. First, we will take the negative sign to the uh, outside of the bracket. So, cos pi minus cos alpha minus of cos 2 pi minus cos pi. So, cos pi is minus 1, cos alpha as it is, cos 2 pi is plus 1, again cos pi is minus 1. Upon simplification of this, we will get the final expression for the average value of the output load voltage as Vdc equal to root 2 into Vs by 2 pi into cos alpha minus 1. Finally, we say that if alpha is varied from its minimum and maximum values which are 0 to pi, the average value of the output load voltage varies from 0 to minus root 2 Vs divided by pi. Right, so that is the discussion on the principle of phase control of AC voltage controllers. Thank you.